Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to talk about how you can authenticate gcloud using a service account. Now gcloud is the GCP SDK or the software development kit. This is the command line tool that you can use to manage the resources and the activities and tasks that you can do on GCP Google Cloud Platform. Now gcloud is one of the very important building blocks in all of the gcp services because you can do a lot of automation and a lot of activities using this tool on gcp so it's important that you are aware about the methods that are available to authenticate this and basically you can authenticate using your google username and password i mean by google username and password is your google account be that a standard gmail account or a g suite account or even a cloud identity account you just need to have a google account to authenticate with this otherwise you can authenticate using a service account which is what i'm going to talk about now now before going into the details also i want to point out about the reasons and the scenarios that are going to make you or that are going to force you to use a service account and basically if you want to use gcloud command on a system that is unattended and it should do a lot of automatic tasks and scripts then while it will work using a username and password a standard username and password for a for a person but doing this using a service account is much more effective and much more even secure and it's just better than doing it with a person username and password the also this will give you better control as mentioned on the account so you can change the permissions whenever you want or even you can delete the account if you don't want to use that system anymore so there will be a lot of flexibility while using the service accounts when doing automations and when using gcloud with let's say they, they, they call them robots actually so when you use those with um, systems and applications and, and softwares so how to do that is very straightforward first of all you have to have gcloud installed on your system and if you don't have it you should already have it i believe but if you don't have it then you can just go to this menu here and then you go to downloads in the downloads you will see an item or a section called google cloud sdk or cloud sdk only you just click this view cloud sdk and it will take you to the sdk homepage where again you click get started and it will show you the possible or the the guides for the operating system that you're using so if you're using Linux or if you're using Windows or Mac OS or any of the Linux variants, then you can find the details here. So if you want to download it for Windows, you just click quick start for Windows and it will show you the details. It's just a very straightforward process. You just download an installer and, and set up the tools on your system and you will be ready to go. Now, once you have it, you can verify that you already have it on your system by just typing gcloud. And that's going to give you the, you know, the, the possible commands and parameters for this and all of this. So if you see this, then that's fine. You are actually having this installed and up to date. If you're seeing a different, a little bit different output, then you maybe have an outdated version or something. However, maybe the version that you will see on my recording is going to be outdated by the time you're going to see this video. So this is something always changing and always updated. However, as long as you're not getting any error while running, gcloud then that's fine you're having this so break it. so how to get started on this let's go back to the gcp console and first of all our first step is we have to create a service account the service accounts can be reached from the menu then you go to i am an admin then you will find the service accounts item or page when you go to service accounts it's a very straightforward process as well you just create the service account by clicking create service account and you have to have a good name for this again because you may be using or maybe you're looking to use this on a machine or a system that does a specific job so maybe you want to type the something that indicates this for my case let's say that i want to name it automation system one you know whatever naming convention that you have something that explains the purpose of this uh, service account then you click create now when you click create the service account is actually done but you just need to have some additional features or some additional settings there the first one is you need to assign specific permissions to this service account 
And this is when the, the actual permissions and the actual roles come in play and you have to pay a lot of attention to those to make sure that you're only assigning the required permissions and settings or access level to this service account. So let's say that I want to do some tasks that involve the compute engine and maybe cloud storage as well. So I'll just go here and find the role that is specific to compute engine. Let's say that for the sake of demonstration, I'll just give it compute admin. So it will have full access to the compute engine resources and instances. And also I'll give it access to the cloud storage. And also I'll give it storage admin. And these, for my case, I'm just wanting to use these two permissions or roles. In your case, you might look to have more roles or, or more detailed um, set of permissions and roles on this. So I'm good with this. I'll click continue. Now, this is a good idea also to set the two fields in here. These two fields are going to ask you to type users who can use this user account or administrators who can manage this service account so the service account will be tied to your account so if you see on the right side you'll see three roles or three groups and if you see the owner this is my email address as the owner of this service account so if if for whatever reason i lose access to this project or my account gets deleted then this service account will be let's say orphaned and nobody will be able to access this service account and do anything on this so it's a good idea to have other people added to the owner role in here to manage the service account for redundancy and security of this account so if you add your users and administrators to this service account i'm not going to add anything in my case you just click done and the first part of this is completed now next part we have to download the key in our case it's going to be a json key file the json key is the private key for this service account which is actually we're going to use in g cloud in google cloud sdk also what we are going to need from here is the email address for this service account so let me go inside it first of all let me copy the email address for this service account then let me create a key and download it as well so I'm going to create a new key and I'm keeping the option to JSON. You can do a P12, but you will need some additional files with that. The easiest and the recommended one is the JSON key file. So clicking create. Now the key will be automatically downloaded. And this is very critical file. You should make sure it's stored safely because this key file is the thing that is going to grant the Google Cloud SDK or the G Cloud instance access to the resources on gcp so this key is very important to be stored safe and nobody should get access to this key as long as he's not needing that access and if anybody wants to access that key then you should at least know about it otherwise it's it, it might cause some issues if it was misused so the key is downloaded and i have the email address of the service account next i just need to place the key file somewhere safe so in my case i'll just put it in the maybe c and i'll make a file there it's not the best place of course because you're putting this in the root but just for the sake of demonstration and, and ease of access as well so i have created a folder on the c drive and i named it gcloud-sa and i placed the key file inside it just to make it more easy as well i will name this file as credentials and then it's time to use gcloud to authenticate using this credential file so again i'm going back to my command prompt and i will type gcloud auth activate service account not sure if the there is autocomplete here or not yeah there is no autocomplete so i have to type it completely actually service account then at this point you have to type the email address of the service account which is the one that we have copied to the notepad and then after that you have to supply the key file as well which is this credentials file so the parameter for this or the argument for this is going to be dash dash key file the key dash file then equals and then you have to type the full path to the key file so in my case it's in c then gcloud sa then the credentials file json 
that's it when i press enter it's going to switch to this service account so now that i have activated the service account i just need to switch to the project that i'm using and to do this i will just have to go to the project here and get its details so going back to the console just going to the dashboard i just need the project id which is this one so take this then go back to the command prompt and I will have to type now gcloud config set project and then the project ID that I have created. This is going to switch the project. However, if you will notice that it's telling me that I don't have permissions to this project or maybe it does not exist. Actually, this project does exist and I do have access to this project. However, I don't have access to all of the aspects of this project and I don't have access to everything is this project because again I did give this service account a limited access to this project so there is something that is missing in the service account that is giving this error so if I type let's say gcloud compute instances list this command is going to list the current compute engine instances that are being provisioned and running on this project when I press enter you will see that the, it's, it's going to show me one instance which is actually the one that is running on this project so if I go there if I go to compute instances you will see the instance if uh, the instance one which is f1 micro and this is its public IP address which is the one that is being shown in here so this is one way to do it if you want to be more specific or if you want to like make sure that this service account gets exactly what it's required for it then you can review the required permissions to achieve a specific task and if you want to get rid of these error messages or warnings then maybe you can give it a viewer access to the project and then edit or access to whatever uh, resource or service that you want to have the service account to access now if you want to do one more test to check the permissions on this then maybe you can check the google cloud storage with and the command for this is gsutil and the authentication for this is actually retrieved from the gcloud authentication and stored configuration so you don't have to do anything so gsutil and then ls this is going to list the current buckets and storage resources that are found on this project so again these three buckets are something that i have created on this project and if i want to create a new bucket then i will just type gs util mb and gs maybe just do this same name again but add a few more letters or numbers yeah. so you see i was able to quickly create a bucket using the service account I'm not sure if I can do the same for compute engine instances because it's not just about granting the user or the service account access to be compute admin. There will be some more roles that are required to work with service accounts and network resources and other stuff that I cannot just create a virtual machine right now because it's for sure it's going to give me an error message actually. So this is it for how you can authenticate gcloud using a service account. This is a very easy and a straightforward process and it's going to make sure that whatever service and whatever script or task that you set up to use gcloud will not stop running because of the authentication timeout on a user account for example or anything. So if you have any question or any comment please don't hesitate to put it in the comments section. Please like the video and subscribe as well and thank you for viewing.